You guys ready to do this? Ready to do this thing? Let's have a little more fun with water. Yeah! Hi friends! We're going to talk more about water today. And I'm going to talk about where water comes from. When you want water and you want to make more water, what you have to do is follow me and I'll show you. I'm going to walk over here to my sink. And that's where I'm going to make more water. Right at my sink. Over here. So come on over. I'm going to get some more water right out of my sink. I'm just going to turn on my faucet. I like to let it run for a little bit to let it get cold. Hey, don't let it run too long. Some water supplies are limited. And then I'm going to put my cup under here. This is making new water. So I'm going to water things with it. I'm going to take a drink from it. And I'm going to ah! actually... Nerd alert! Nerd alert! Whoop, whoop, whoop! Ah! doesn't make any new water. All the water that we have has already been on Earth since Earth was born. It all moves around and around in something we call the water cycle. Who knew? Thanks, nerd! Hey guys, so as it turns out, that nerd was right. She usually is. You don't just make water by turning on a faucet. That's not new water. That's just water that's coming from somewhere that water is stored. And the water on our planet has been on our planet since the beginning of Earth. So the water we have now in our lakes, in our rivers, in our streams, in our glasses, and our bathtubs, and under the ground, that water has been here forever. And it just keeps going around and around in something we call the water cycle. The water cycle. Water goes from place to place over and over. These terrariums I made are kind of a great example of the water cycle. I took a plain plastic one like this. See how dry it is in there? I got this from Urban Olive and Vine. They do some really delicious takeout food. So I got some food in that and I just thought, I don't want to throw that away. I want to use that for something. So I took that plastic container. I put some dirt in. I planted some seeds in there. I watered it a little bit and then I closed the lid. Can you see all the water on the cover? These two terrariums sit in a sunny spot and the water inside of there goes from the dirt to the air up to the top where it condenses and then drips down back again onto the plants. It's the water cycle in a little plastic box. And look, because of that water, something's growing. I watered these about four days ago and I haven't watered them since. Look at all those little plants. That's basil. It's going to be delicious. Plants, animals, soil, groundwater, ice, rivers, lakes, oceans, clouds. Okay, let's do it again, you guys. Can you see all my friends down here? They're going to help me remind you where we can find water. We can find water in plants. Plants drink water with their roots. We find water in animals. Animals drink water with their mouths, usually. Some animals can actually drink water through their skin. We're animals. We drink water with our mouths. How does water get out of animals? Well, we can pee or cry or sweat. Those are ways that water can get out of animals. You find water in ice cubes. Well, not just ice cubes. Giant ice cubes. Glaciers. Polar ice caps snow, places that it's frozen. Look, it's stripping down my hand. Can you see it? Because my hand is warm and it's melting. You can find water in soil and in the ground. Water is in clouds. Water is in rivers. Water is in lakes. Water is in the ocean. Most of the water is in the ocean. Water is everywhere on our planet. Like I said, 
It's like a super spy or a superhero. It is everywhere when you need it. Our coloring sheet this week is so cool. It's by my friend, Kathy Capulis. So all those things I just told you about and how water goes around and around and around in the water cycle, I have a really cool drawing of it. I'm going to show you. This is the water cycle. This is our coloring page for this episode. My friend, Kathy Kepulis, she's an amazing artist. She made this really cool drawing of the water cycle. I have so many cool friends, you guys, and I am kind of expecting a cool friend of mine to come along. <gasps> I hear something. Remember I said if I hear a knock on the door, we might have a guest? I think the guest is here. Oh, it's my friend Zara. Come in, Zara. Okay, I gotta go six feet away from you, so hold on one second. I'm gonna move a little bit. My friend is here to show you something super cool. Hi, guys. This is my friend Zara. Zara speaks sign language. Zara's going to show you how to say some of the words we need to know to talk about the water cycle. So, Zara, where did you learn sign language? Uh, I learned sign language in college. That's how you say college. Did you always want to speak sign language? I didn't know about sign language until I went into college. Uh, I met a deaf friend and she started teaching me. That's really cool. So can you show me how to say the word water? Yeah. You got to take your hand like this. Okay. And put it to your mouth. Oh. Like by my chin? Like this. That's really cool. So that's water. Okay, can you say animals drink water? Mm-hmm. Animals. Animals. Drink. Drink. Water. Water. Mm -hmm. First three fingers, right? Yep. Okay, can you say plants drink water? Plants. Ooh, that's really cool. What did you do with your other hands? Plants. Plants. Drink. Drink. Water. Drink is kind of easy because it sort of just looks like drinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so animals drink water, plants drink water. Can you say ice or glacier? I can say ice. Ice. Ooh, that's all? Yep. Ice. 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 Okay. Ice, ice, baby. Din, 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 din. Din, 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 din. That was for all the parents. Old. Okay, that's like water being like locked up. Mm -hmm. Ice. Okay, can you say clouds? Clouds. Cloud. That's it's like they're twirling cool. through the air. Oh, that's really cool. And they do twirl through the air. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you say rain? Rain. Rain. Okay, that's easy. I would have thought it was like choo, choo, <laughs> but you keep your hands up in the air. Okay, can you say ocean? Ocean. That's very big waves. Okay, can you say lake? So it's water. Water. And then, so that's like the water is like the water is sitting still. Yep. In a little exactly place. Right. Okay, so the water is there. Okay, and then can you say river? It's water, water again. again, probably. Okay. And then this. And that like makes the sense of the too. River. It totally makes sense. So water and so I think we maybe got how about soil, dirt, soil, soil is like that. And then there's another place. I don't know if there's a word for this in sign language, but it's called groundwater. The water is under the ground. Yeah, you could say ground. Ground water. Water. So that's where it's under the ground. So you have to go like soil and then ground mm -hmm. and then water. Water. That's very cool. So those are all the places that we find water in the water cycle. And you know the words for all of those. I do. <laughs> My friend McKenna wants to know how to say some other cool words. Hedgehog. Ut is amazing. And how long is the St. Croix better river? Okay, McKenna, I will ask Zara to say those words and sentences for us. Can you say a few more words? I have a friend who wanted to know how to say some different words in sign language. Yeah. Okay. The first word is hedgehog. Ooh, that one's fun. Hedgehog. Okay, I gotta try that again. What did you do with your hand? What's that hand? It's yeah, like this. this. Okay. Hedgehog. 
And then you put your, do you put your other hand, oh, kind of like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go. Hedgehog. What do you do with your thumb? Your thumb kind of stays in. Okay. Hedgehog. Like that? Yeah, like it's little hedgehog. spikes. That's really cool. She loves hedgehogs. And then she also wanted to know how to say art is amazing. Yeah. So art, it's like you're drawing on a canvas. Okay, so your pinky. hand is a canvas and your pinky's up. Art. Art. And do you have to move it in any certain way? Uh, you can move it kind of how you might if you were painting okay. a little squiggle. So that's art. Art. That's very cool. It's amazing. Amazing. Oh, by your eyes, with mm -hmm. your hands, amazing. So art is amazing. This is very hard, Zara. It is very hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the last one, this is a long one, so do your best. Mm -hmm. She has a question, and her question is, how long has the St. Croix been a river? How many years has the St. Croix River been there? <laughs> that was good. I think that's, that's, a, that's a, a better way to ask that question in sign language. That was very helpful. Wow. You're amazing. You're amazing. How do I say that? You're. You're. So you point at me. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Like my eyelashes are like going, woo, that <laughs> yeah, kind of reminds exactly. me. Exactly. Thanks very much. I wish I didn't have to stay six feet away from you so that I could hug you. Me too. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Liz. Wow, we really learned some cool sign language. So you know what's kind of a mystery is how does water get from one place to another? We've talked about the water cycle. We know that it's in the clouds, in the plants, in the animals, in the soil in us, because we're kind of like animals, but how does it get from one place to another? How does it go from a river into a cloud? How does it go from a cloud into the soil? Wow. Ah! Oh, oh, it's the nerd. There are, there, are there are four big ways that water travels throughout the water cycle. Okay. So one way I want to talk about is evaporation. Evaporation, a liquid turns into a gas. Did you say gas? Okay, seriously, when water gets very warm, it goes from liquid to vapor. The water could be in a lake, a river, where else, in nerd glass friend? Of water or a puddle on the ground into a gas, water vapor in the air. Another way that water travels is condensation. Condensation, when vapor collects on a surface and forms droplets. You know that terrarium that you made, Liz? Yes. Hey guys, remember those terrariums I planted? I took that plastic takeout food container from Urban Olive and Vine, I put some dirt in it, I put some basil seeds in it, and I put a tiny bit of water in it, and then I closed it up and I put it in a sunny spot. Look at all that water that's collecting on the inside of those covers. Remember that water that kind of joined yes. together on the ceiling All and the sides. the top of it. That's condensation. Okay. Another way that water travels is precipitation. Precipitation, like rain, snow, or hail. Okay. So precipitation comes from clouds. Okay. And it can be a liquid or a solid, like rain or snow or hail. Oh. Another big way that water travels is through infiltration, which is when water hits the ground and infiltrates or goes into the soil and the rocks that are on the ground. Like this? Just like that. Wow, so water's traveling all the time. All the time. Amazing. Thanks, nerd. You're welcome. Okay, so we're gonna play a game outside. And it is about those things that my friend Clara the nerd just talked about. Precipitation infiltration, condensation, and evaporation. Those are all ways that water travels. So when we play the game, watch for this. Evaporation means we climb up as high as we can. Precipitation means we fall from high to low. Infiltration means we soak into our surroundings. And condensation means we all clump together. Ready, set, go. Evaporation. Precipitation. 
Infiltration. Condensation. Infiltration. Condensation. Evaporation. Precipitation. Precipitation, infiltration, condensation, evaporation. Whew, that game was so fun. I'm really tired though. I I'm a little sweaty too. Hey, perspiration, that's another way that water moves, in sweat. It was a lot of running around. I can't even imagine how hard water works all day long. Oh, wait a minute. There's somebody outside my window here. I gotta go see... Oh my gosh, I think it's one of my friends. It might be my friend. It's my friend Kristen Johnson. I'm gonna go out and see what she's doing. What are you up to today, Kristen? Kristen? Well, hi, Liz. I've been bird watching for hours. It's fascinating with my binoculars. <gasps> Yikes. Uh, Kristen, I think you need a break. I do? Yes, give those eyes a rest. Hey, Liz, maybe I should take a break from all this bird watching. Hey, maybe you want to come with me. Maybe, may, why don't I take a break and I'll teach you how to make these. Yes! Okay, let's do it. Kristen's eyes are recovering nicely. Now it's time to do a craft. Okay, so here we are out back and we're going to make some binoculars for bird watching with Kristen. Thanks, Kristen. Tell us what to do. Well, it's pretty easy, and you, and you get to use all the creativeness you want, and you don't need to get anything that's not at your house. But I had some tape at my house, so I started with this tape that I have. But you, if you have crayons or colored markers or paint or paper you want to tape, you can do whatever you want. How about glitter? Oh, glitter? Oh, I wish I had glitter. That would be fun. Yeah. Sometimes when we do crafts, we talk about things that we're thinking about. Yeah. So, Liz, do we still still have to stay six feet apart? Well, I think we should, Kristen, because we're just trying to be safe. I know that some places are opening and people can go more places, but, but I don't want to make you sick. I don't want to get sick, so we'll hang out together, and we can still have a lot of fun. Staying 6 to 13 feet apart. Yeah, okay. That's what I kind of thought, too. Just to be on the safe side. I think I'm going to put some orange tape right around here, just like this. Yeah. Just to make it a little bit more colorful. And these, these like, I know you guys have toilet paper around, cause, too, because we have been at home. Just look at Kristen. Go with those toilet paper tubes. Go, Kristen. Okay, here's how you put them together, you guys. Watch. Okay. I just took a piece of... Scotch tape. Regular tape. And you do it on the top. You just put it on the bottom. You just put it on one side and then you boot, you just push it onto the other. And then you do it on the other side on the bottom. And then the hardest, trickiest part of this is the holes on the side to put the to put your string in for your strap. Ask a grown up to help you punch the holes in the tubes. One hole in the outside of each tube, then it's time for your string. Kristen, show us super fast how to put that string on. String through the hole, double knot, then show us what you got. This, it would be great if some people did this and showed you some pictures of things. I would love it. Share your pictures. All right, and there we go. Ready to go, girl? Yes, let's go do some bird watching. Okay. Yeah. 
So Kristen and I did some bird watching together. Hey, there's some of those birds right there. Yeah. Two of your good friends? What are you watching there? My birds. They seem to really like you. Well, I, I, I'm very quiet, so they don't know that I'm here. And I'm looking for my binoculars. And then I got kind of obsessed and started noticing birds everywhere. I got up really early because a lot of birds are out in the morning. Hey guys, I'm outside in my jammies because there's some birds out here that I want you to hear and I want you to see them. They're super cool. They're really loud and they wake me up. That's why I'm out here in my pajamas. My pajamas right there. I'm going to show you these birds. This is what kind of bird it is. It's called a wren. Cute! Hey Zara, how do you say wren in sign language? It is spelled W-R-E-N. So this is how you sign bird. And if you're trying to talk about other birds, some have their own signs like eagle or peacock. And then other birds you just have to finger spell like wren. It's this little bird and it's making so much noise. Can you see it moving a little? It's over by that little house. Sorry, I think it wants to live there. And it's calling. Whoa, oh my God. Whoa, did you see that? That tiny bird came right at me. Let's see it again. And it's calling. Whoa, oh my God. Guess I'm lucky to be alive. That was terrifying. Okay, I want to tell you some really cool things I learned about that wren. Remember that wren that we saw that attacked me? It totally attacked me. And it's like this big, and I'm huge, and it came right at me. That wren attacked me for a couple reasons. Wrens are very, very brave, and they're called aggressive birds. When they want to live in a home, they find a place to live, and they defend it. That means they try to get everybody else away from it. So that wren really wanted to live in that little blue house in my tree. I think it's building a nest there. This is another cool thing about wrens. When they build a nest to keep it clean, to help keep it clean, they sometimes put a spider egg sac in there. And when the baby spiders hatch, they let them live in there to help keep their nest and their house clean. Can you imagine that? If we just let spiders live in our houses and we didn't squish them, they might help keep our houses clean. Maybe we should try it. So runs are pretty cool. Glad I went bird watching. I learned more about runs. See something in nature that you don't know about? Study and learn. Boy, that bird watching was super cool. I got really obsessed with it. Sometimes that happens to me. And I got really excited about it. Now, I guess I better put these binoculars away because I don't really need them right now to look at you. So I saw a lot of birds out there. And the really cool thing about the birds that are around right now is a lot of them came from far away. They migrated and they came from warmer places up to where we live once it started to get warm up here. So when it gets cold here, they fly away to a warmer place. And when it gets warmer here, they come back. We know people who do that too. Some people go to warmer places and come back when it gets a little warmer by us. So that's called migration. Now a lot of these birds that migrate were very far away, not that many months ago. And I'm gonna show you a really cool map with a lot of little dots on it and the dots are all different kinds of birds and where they migrate between January and December. Birds follow waterways. They follow rivers, they follow lakes, they follow pathways that have to do with water. So water is really important to those birds too. Check this out. The dots on this map are different kinds of birds that migrate. 
oh my gosh, watch these tiny dots moving from south up into the north as it gets warmer and now it's close to May and they're all coming up by us. They go even further north and then they kind of turn around and start going south because they know it's going to get cold again. Some of them have to fly over the Gulf of Mexico with their tiny, tiny wings and they go all the way back down to where it's warm so that by December, there they are again and then it starts all over. Can you imagine migrating thousands of miles, flying over the ocean with those tiny wings? Amazing! Birds are pretty cool. I've learned a lot about birds from my friends, Kristen Johnson, who made me these binoculars, and two people I know named John and Patty Mueller, who are super, super scientists, and they know a lot about birds and a lot of other science too. Maybe someday they'll be on my show. Hey, I think it's time for more bird watching. Oh, Liz, Liz, is that you? Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I'm bird watching. <gasps> With the binoculars we made. Yeah. Wow. I've been out here for hours. Liz, do you think you maybe need a break? Well, maybe. Hey, do you want to send us stuff? Please send us your ideas, questions, artwork, and photos. Phipps, just add water at gmail.com.